I'd like to tell you why I find the creationist case less than convincing. I think they use their own language to try to pretend that they're making less elaborate claims than they are making. They use words like, of course, I mean, we are scientists. We accept that Darwin was a great man. We believe in evolution. Yes, we believe in evolution. We believe in natural selection, yes. The only thing we say is that we believe in microevolution. Once you've got a species created, then that species will go on getting better and better at what it does. It just happens that we don't believe in macroevolution. We don't believe that one species can turn into another one or split into two species. And that sounds like a small technical point, but the point is, what they are saying is every species was separately created, as it says in the Bible, so that if there are 5,000 different kinds of beetle, God created every single one separately. Somebody said he must have been extraordinarily fond of beetles. And <laughs> it's impossible to believe that man and the ape ever had a common ancestor because no species that descended from any other species, they're all separately created. So although it sounds like a minor thing, macro, micro, it means that they are saying God created everything. They are basing their arguments on incredulity. They don't like that to be said, but it seems to be true. They are saying, when I look at the bacterium, it is so complex that I find it impossible to believe they will ever be able to explain it. Well, I can look at it and say, well, they've explained things quite as difficult as that, and I don't see any reason why they should not believe that too. Another thing that makes me doubt them is that they're supposed to be talking about life on Earth, but they don't seem to be looking at the natural world at all. They are talking about language and philosophy and what he said and what I said. When Darwin wrote his book, he was enthralled and enraptured by everything in the world around him. He looked at thousands of species that collected them. He spent years studying the earthworm. He spent eight years studying barnacles. And if you look up the, the index to um, Gensky's book about, uh, <coughs> about creation, I looked in vain through the, through the index for the name of any single plant or animal. They don't seem to be looking at them. I did find the word seal, but I found that it was the other kind of seal, as in sealing wax. And most of them now have reduced their description of the natural world to the bacterium and its flagellum. In another book you can find one or two references to animals, but eight references to the bacteria of flagellum coming back and forth all the way to the book. But the final reason, the main reason why I can't sell out to them is because they say, we are building a bridge between theology and science. Why can't you come halfway and meet us? So I say to myself, all right, you say that the world, as you look at it, convinces you that there must be an intelligent design. Somebody must have thought of it. So tell me now about this designer and what his purpose was. And to that question, you get two different kinds of answers. If you go to one of the more intellectual ones, they say, I'm not talking about that. I'm not going to, I never use the word God. I never use the word creator. All I said was, it looks as if it was designed. Well, in that case, end of conversation. If you go to a less sophisticated believer, and say, tell me about the designer, 
They are likely to say, I thought you'd never ask. Come with me and I will tell you. Here is this book, the Holy Bible, and this is the Word of God. And if you make a leap of faith, you will find all the answers in there. Well, it may, they may be right. It may be the Word of God. I can't prove it's not, and they can't prove it is. But all I do say is that if you enter a debate which ends in saying, this is the Holy Word of God and you have to believe it, then whatever else it is, it is not science. I would defend their right to believe in it. I defend their right to preach about it in churches and chapels and public meetings. I defend their right to go into academies and schools and defend it there as long as they defend it under the heading of theology or Bible class or comparative religion. But I will not admit their right to walk into a science class and say, you're doing the science all wrong. We know how science ought to be done. You've got to listen to us. It is not science, and it never will be science. And I think that it is the refusal to accept that that is causing all the trouble. Um, there was a, recently a long letter in the Daily Telegraph. I don't read the Daily Telegraph, but people send me cuttings. And it was signed by a long string of scientists right down to the end of the column. People like um, Lord Winston and Baroness Warnock and all the highest, and they were the message of the letter was, please, please, will the Christians stop bashing the Darwinists? And please, please, will the Darwinists stop bashing the Christians? And I believe that if we could get back to the place we occupied for most of my lifetime, where there was a demarcation line, theology there, science there, then we could take all the heat out of it. And if we could agree on that, I would be happy to end this section of my talk with the thing that um, the comedian Dave Allen always ended his show with, good night and may your God go with you. <laughs>